In this chapter, we're going to be going over subsets. So for the definition of a subset, we say that set A is a subset of set B, which is going to be symbolized with this symbol right here, if and only if all of the elements of A are also elements of set B. And then we can also use this symbol right here to indicate that set A is not a subset of set B. Okay, let's do a couple examples using this definition. So let's determine whether set A is a subset of set B. So for this first one, we have set A is the elements boat, train, plane. Set B contains the elements boat, train, plane, automobile. So what we're doing is we're trying to determine if all of the elements of set A are in set B, and they are. We have boat here, boat here, train here, train here, plane here, and plane here. So that means that A is a subset of set B. And then we would write this like this. And also notice here that B is not a subset of set A because B has an extra element, which is automobile, which is not in set A. Okay, for the next one here, we have the set A, which is 1, 3, 5, 7. And set B is the elements 1 and 3. So if we're trying to determine if the if set A is a subset of set B, we have to determine if all of the elements in set A are in set B. So we have a 1 and a 1, a 3 and a 3. However, set B does not have a 5 and a 7. So that means that A is not a subset of set B. So this time, set B is actually a subset of set A. Okay, and then for the next example here, for uh, part C, set A is going to be the set of all elements X, such that X is a yellow fruit. And then for set B, we have the set of all X elements, such that X is a red fruit. So determining if set A is a subset of set B, we need to make sure that all of the elements in set A are also in set B. In this case, they would not be, because for example, if we have a, think of a yellow fruit, think of a, for example, a banana, a banana would not be contained in set B, because set B is only red fruits, so that means the banana is not in set B, all of the elements from set A are not in set B, therefore A is not a subset of set B. Okay, and then the last one here, we have set A is time, Newsweek, and people, and set B is Newsweek, people, time. So determining if all the elements in A are in B, we have time and time, Newsweek and Newsweek, and people, people. So all of the elements in set A are also in set B, so that means set A is a subset of set B. And notice here that um, set B is also a subset of set A. And these sets are actually equal to each other. Okay, so that was the definition of a subset. So now for proper subsets, we say that a subset, set A is a proper subset of set B, which we're going to symbolize with nearly the same symbol that we use for subset, except notice there's not that equal, kind of that, that line at the bottom, which can be thought of as an or equal to sign. So proper subset A, proper subset of B, if only happens if all of the elements of A are also elements of B, and this is the important part, A does not equal B. So a proper subset is almost the definition of a subset, except the sets cannot be equal this time. So for example, in the last one, the last example we did with these magazines, uh, this would have been, this was a subset, we said, but this would not be a proper subset because these sets are equal. 
Okay, and then uh, similarly to before, if we use this notation with the line through it, that means that set A is not a proper subset of set B. So let's see some examples here. So for the first one, we have set A is contains the elements red, blue, yellow. Set B contains the elements red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet. So we need to determine if all of the elements of set A are also in set B, except they are not equal. So for set A, we have red. Set B also has red. Set A has blue. Set B also has blue. A has yellow. Set B also has yellow. And they're not equal to each other, each other so that means that A is a proper subset of B. Okay, so it was a subset and it was not equal, so they it is a proper subset. So when we mention when I mention that line below um, the subset symbol, making it a subset and not a proper subset, uh, this line right here, you can think of that as an or equal to. So a subset can be equal to the actual set. Proper subset cannot be equal to it. Okay, next example we have set A is two, four, six, eight. Set B is eight, six, four, two. So we want to determine if A is a proper subset. So we have to see if all of the elements in A are also in B and they're not equal. Set A has a two, B has a two, A has a four, B has a four. A has a 6, B has a 6, A has an 8, and B has an 8. So even though all of the sets in, or all of the elements in set A are also in set B, these sets are completely equal, so A is not a proper subset of B. So even though A is not a proper subset of set B, A is a subset of B because they are equal. And let me just include that in here, that A equals B. Okay, so for uh, this last one here, in set A we have jazz, pop, hip hop. In set B we have classical, jazz, and pop. So seeing if all the elements in A are also in B, A has jazz, so does B. Uh, A has pop, so does B, and a has hip hop, however that is not in set B, so that means A is not a proper subset of set B. Okay, and also for this one, A is not a subset of B, uh, A is not equal to B, however the cardinalities are the same, so these would be equivalent sets. Okay, so for this next thing here, uh, we have this piece of information at the top of the page. Every set is a subset of itself. So that means A is a subset of itself because they can be equal. It can be equal to itself and still be a subset. However, no set is a proper subset of itself. So remember, think about that line underneath as or equal to. This is kind of saying A less than or equal to a, which is true because of the or equal to. The other one, proper subset, would be saying a is less than a, which would not be true because they would be equal to each other. Okay, so for example here, uh, supp suppose a is the empty set and b is the set containing the elements 1, 2, 3, and 4. We want to know is a a subset of b? So we want to know is the empty set a subset of the set containing the elements one, two, three. So in order to show that it wasn't, to show that A is not a subset of B, we would have to find at least one element of A that's not an element of B. But this can't be done though. So since this can't be done, that means that A is a subset of B. Okay, so for a little explanation here, there's nothing in this empty set that is not in this set. So that means that it just has to be a subset by the definition. Okay, so what this means is that the empty set is a subset of every set, including itself. Okay, that will always be true. So let's see a couple examples here. 
um, using this fact and also just um, a good example of a refresher from uh, the previous section. So let's determine whether the following are true and false. So the first one here we have three is an element. So remember that sign right here, it means an, is an element of. Okay, so it says three is an element of the set, three, four, five. So that's saying is three in that set? And that answer is true because it is right here. So this first one is true. <clears throat> now for the second one, we have set containing the element three in the set with elements three, four, five. So this is actually false because this is saying that the set three is in this set, which is not true because only the element three is in that set. There isn't a set with an element three in the set, only the element three is in the set on the right. So that one is false, even though it looks like it might be true. So to compare this to what it would look like for C here, this says the set with an element three is in the set of set three, set four, and set five. So this time it's true because we have an element that is the set with an element three in it. So this one's true. So hopefully um, this one and the, and the previous one uh, make a little bit of sense now. Okay, and for this next one, we have the set with an element three in it. So this is D. The set with an element three in it is a subset of the set three, four, five. So what this means is it are all of the elements in the first one, also in the second one. And the answer to that is true because we have a three in the first one and we also have a three in the second one. So this one is true. Okay, and for the next one here, we have three. We wanna know is that a subset of the set three, four, five. So the issue here is that three on the left is not in braces. In order for something to be a subset, it has to be a set. The one on the left is not a set, so it's it cannot be a subset. So this one's gonna be false. So in order for uh, something to be a subset of something, it has to be a set. Okay, and then the last one here we have uh, the empty set on the left. The empty set is a subset of the set with elements three, four, five. And this one is true based on what we said earlier at the top of this page. The empty set is a uh, subset to every single set. Okay, so for this next thing, we're gonna be going over the number of subsets from any given set. So suppose we want to just know the number of subset that a sets have, that a set that a set has without actually listing out each subset. Well, there's a way we can actually do this. There's gonna be a little uh, expression that we can evaluate. And let's uh, get to that expression. Let's see um, how this pattern arises. So we're gonna have three columns. We're gonna have a set on the left, the subsets formed in the middle, and then the number of those subsets on the right. So first, let's say we have the empty set. So if we have the empty set, that means there are no elements here, right? So the only subset to the empty set is also the empty set. Okay, and the number of subsets that are right here that we just wrote down is just one. Okay, so that's when there's no elements. Now for the next one, let's do it with one element. So let's say we have an element and let's throw in a uh, an A just to represent some element in there. Okay, so now we have one element in here and let's see how many subsets we have of this. Well, let's start with the empty set. We know the empty set is a subset to everything. And then what is also a subset to this set is the set itself. So we're just dealing with actual subsets, not proper subsets. 
So the set A is also a subset of itself. So there are one, two. Now there are two subsets that we wrote down. Okay, so let's do it again for this next one. Let's do it with two elements. So let's use A and B. Let me move it up a little bit. So A and B. Now there's two elements. And the number of, or the amount of subsets that we can have here, let's start to list them all out. Well, we can have the subset, the empty subset. We can have the subset A. We can have the subset B. And then we can also have the subset AB. So just the set itself, right? So all of these are subsets to our set. And there are one, two, three, four of these. So let's do one more and this will kind of show us the pattern. Uh, you might see it already. Let's do three elements, A, B, and C. So now we have three of them. And listing out the subsets, let's start again with the empty set. And we can also have set A, just like before. We can have set with a B element. We can have set with a C element. So that takes care of all with a single element. Now let's do ones with two of them. We can have A, B. We can have B, C. And we can have A, C. So that's every combination of having two of them. And now lastly, we can just have the set equal to itself. A, B, C. I just forgot commas in here before. There we go. Okay, so this is every possible combination of subsets for this one, and this has eight different subsets. So let's go take a look at this pattern that is arising here. The number of sub subsets for no elements is one, for one element is two, two elements is four, three elements is eight. So the pattern on the right, as we can see, it keeps on multiplying by two, right? It goes from one to two, two to four, four to eight. So what this actually means if something is multiplying by two, that means it can be represented as a number raised up to an exponent with base two. This first one would be two to the zero. Anything to the zero power equals one. So one equals two to the zero. This next one is two to the first. Two to the first equals two. This next one is two squared. And the last one is two cubed. So that is the pattern that is arising when we're dealing with more and more elements in a set. So we can keep on going and the pattern that actually pops up, the number of distinct subsets in a uh, of a finite site, of a finite set rather, is going to be represented by the expression two to the nth power, just like we were doing above, two to some number. And that number n is gonna be the number of elements in the set. Okay, so this little expression, two to the n, tells us how many subsets we can have. So since we know that proper subsets cannot be equal to the set itself, there's always gonna be one less proper subset so what that means is that the number of proper subsets of a set is two to the n minus one. So the minus one you're subtracting is the one where the they were equal in the distinct subsets. Okay, so let's do a couple examples for this last page here. So let's determine the number of distinct subsets for the set uh, with elements S, L, E, D. So the number of distinct subsets is going to be two to the N, where N is the number of elements. So that means in this case, elements are gonna be one, two, three, four. So N equals four. 
So we're going to plug that in for n. So it's two to the fourth power. So two to the fourth power, we have our calculators, but we should be able to do this one in our head. This is two times two times two times two, which is 16. So there are 16 distinct subsets for the set with elements S, L, E, D. Okay, so for the next one here, I'm just finished writing that in. Uh, what this wants us to do now is list all of the subsets for the set S, L, E, D. Okay, so the way that I'm gonna do this is similar to the way that I was doing it before. So let's start with the empty set. There's one subset. And now let's do the next one with only single uh, one element in, in the subset. So S is a subset. L is a subset. E is a subset. And D is a subset. Right, so each one of these is a subset of our original. So for the next one, let's do every possible combination of two of them. So we're going to have S and L. And then let's do S and E. And let's do S and D. Next, let's do L and E. And then let's do L and D. And for the last one, it looks like the last one here is going to be E and D. Uh, once again, I forgot the commas. Let me throw in these commas here. Okay, so now uh, almost done here. Now we're going to do one with three elements in it. So let's say we have S, L, and E. And S, L, and D. And we can also have S, E, D. And for uh, the last one, it looks like L, E, D. Okay, so that's the last one for uh, three elements. And then lastly, the one with all four elements is just going to be S, L, E, and D, which is just obviously the original set. So if we count these up, there should be six, uh, 16 of them, the number that we got up here, which indeed there are. Okay, and for the last question here, how many of the distinct subsets are proper subsets? So for proper subsets, we should know that it's always gonna be one less than the distinct subsets. So let's do it kind of two ways here. Let's use the formula. That's gonna be two to the n minus one. We already said that n was four because that's how many elements were in the set S, L, E, D. So this is going to be two to the fourth minus one. We said two to the fourth was 16. 16 minus one is 15. So there's 15 proper subsets. And if we went to the question above that we just did, we would see that if we counted all of them, except for the one that's equal, because that one is not a proper subset, then we would get 15 of them. Okay, so that is it for this chapter.